Welcome back to the Crypto World channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is still playing out this Wyckoff accumulation pattern. And right now, we are seeing a massive spike in the Bitcoin open interest on exchanges, which is very important to pay attention to. All of that and more in this video. So make sure you're watching all the way to the end so that you're not missing out on any of this important information. And just before we jump into it, make sure to drop a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, you might as well subscribe with notifications turned on for more updates just like this every single day. But with all of that out of the way, let's get straight to this video is about so right here we're on the bitcoin your solar charts on the daily time frame and this is zoomed all the way out here to really look at the last four to five years worth of price action and first of all the bitcoin price is the candlesticks just here but this yellow line right here is the s p 500 index on the daily time frame so basically what the us stock market is doing and the reason why i'm looking at this chart is because it compares the bitcoin price to what's happening in the stock market and most of the time not all of the time but most of the time bitcoin and the stock market are pretty correlated with each other for example throughout 2016 and 2017 back here both the stock market and the bitcoin price was extremely bullish during those time periods but you'll notice that the stock market and the bitcoin price topped out very close to each other and so it wasn't until the stock market entered more of a bearish time period just here that we saw the next bear market for bitcoin the 2018 bear market and then when the s p 500 bottomed out at the end of 2018 that is also just about exactly where bitcoin bottomed out at the end of the 2018 bear market getting ready for that next bull run that we saw in 2019 similar to how the stock market flipped bullish in 2019 leading into the beginning of 2020 which is where we saw the March 2020 crash in both the stock market and in the Bitcoin price and then what came next for the stock market was an extremely bullish recovery and we saw basically the exact same thing in the Bitcoin price so as I said earlier it's not a perfect correlation for example if we zoom in a little bit closer over the past one year there has been some short term time periods where these two diverge away from each other for example during the middle of 2021 the stock market was still heading to the upside while the Bitcoin price was in a short-term downtrend but because of the fact that the stock market was still looking really strong here it was only a matter of time before bitcoin began to bounce back up and come back in line with what the stock market was doing until we reached september where the s p 500 had a short-term correction exactly like what bitcoin did and then in both of these markets we were bullish throughout october as we entered into november where the stock markets flipped a little bit bearish here in the shorter term similar to how bitcoin flipped bearish in november and what we are seeing right now is the s p 500 index breaking into new all-time highs that tells us that it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin begins flipping bullish again and starts heading back towards its all-time high, similar to what we saw in the middle of 2021 once again. In a more bearish scenario where the Bitcoin price enters much more bearish price action over the next few months, as some people were talking about, that would really require the stock market entering into a much more bearish time period, which is right now what we are not seeing. The S&P 500 is once again breaking into new all-time highs, but obviously in the future that can change and I will be keeping you updated if we see any major changes in the Bitcoin price and the stock market. Now, with that being said, obviously it's important that we don't rely on just one thing like this to potentially help predict some more bullish price action coming over the next few months. Instead, we need to continue looking at some different Bitcoin charts. For example, on this chart just here, this is still the daily time frame for Bitcoin, but this shows us the time periods where the Bitcoin fear agreed index was either sitting in extreme fear or very close to extreme fear. And you can see that today this index is now sitting in extreme fear. And if you simply look at the previous time periods where this index was sitting in extreme fear or close to extreme fear, that was at the end of September, also in the middle of 2021. And the time before that was in March and April 2020. And what do all of those time periods have in common? Well, all of them came after a lot of bearish price action, as we have seen recently. And also, when you're looking at all of these time periods, within the next couple months or so, we almost always saw a lot of bullish price action coming next, making these areas great times to accumulate Bitcoin. Of course, that's not financial advice. That's just telling you what this chart actually means and what has happened in its past. And if you're on the channel back in September and the middle of 2020, I was telling you the same thing. And just before we look at some other important Bitcoin charts later in this video, we first need to talk about the Bitcoin open interest on exchanges. Now, this chart just here shows the Bitcoin to US dollar price on the daily time frame, which is the black line just here. And the purple line is the all exchanges estimated leverage ratio, which is calculated by dividing the open interest sitting on all exchanges divided by the total amount of Bitcoin sitting on exchanges. And by the way, for any beginners out there, open interest is basically borrowed money, most commonly in the form of leverage leverage trades and just about every single time where we see a major spike on this chart a major spike in open interest not long after that as in within the next few weeks or so we see a very volatile movement for Bitcoin and not just that quite often when we see these spikes in open interest they also come in confluence with a major market top or a major market bottom most of the time and there's really two ways to determine whether we're at a market top or a market bottom the first and most obvious way is to look at the recent price action obviously if we have been heading to the downside recently then 
Bitcoin is approaching a bottom like what we saw in July 2021. Compared to the flip side, where the recent Bitcoin price action has been a lot of bullish price action, then it's very likely that Bitcoin is approaching some sort of market top as what we saw in the beginning of the September correction. And the second way to determine whether this might be a market top or a market bottom is to look at the Bitcoin funding rates across all of these exchanges. And right now we've got a lot of funding rates sitting at their neutral values at 0.01%. But we are beginning to see a lot of green funding rates just here, which are basically negative funding rates. And anytime we see that, that means there's more short positions in the market than long positions, meaning that more and more people in the market are getting bearish and betting on the Bitcoin price going much lower. And so the more this happens, the more expensive short positions get to maintain because this funding rate, if it's negative, the short positions have to pay that as a fee to the long positions, usually every eight hours. And so it's quite likely that this massive amount of open interest, this borrowed money across all of these exchanges, it's mostly in short positions, which means obviously they'll be making profits if the Bitcoin price continues going to the downside. But after we see a lot of people enter into new short positions, that selling pressure has already been applied to the Bitcoin price. And so eventually, if we stay at these prices for too long, then those negative funding rates are potentially going to be chewing up the profits of those short positions, which could result in those short positions having to be closed. And when you close a short position, you have to essentially buy back into the underlying asset. So for example, on this chart, if they're shorting Bitcoin, they have to essentially apply buying pressure to the Bitcoin price, which will push the Bitcoin price further to the upside, forcing more people to close their short positions, which will add even more and more buying pressure. And that is what's known as a short squeeze. And that's exactly what we saw at the end of July right here with that extremely bullish movement heading into the beginning of August. And so at the moment, we are simply seeing the same ingredients, the same sort of signs on these charts that we saw in the second half of July 2021, showing us that a short squeeze is potentially likely, especially if this open interest continues to the upside, especially as it has done just recently here. Now, just giving you a really quick update on this WIC of accumulation over here on the Bitcoin to US dollar chart on the 12 hour time frame. And according to this WIC of accumulation pattern, the current Bitcoin price is pretty much exactly where it should be. And even if Bitcoin dips all the way down towards around 44 to 45,000, that would simply be Bitcoin forming the spring for this WIC of accumulation. And by the way, these grayed out candles just here, I actually copied that from the June and July price action. So this is just another sign on the chart showing us that the current Bitcoin price is in a very similar situation as what we were in back in June and July 2021. But it's important to mention here that these grayed out candles shouldn't be taken as an exact prediction because once again, it's just copied price action. So really, I'm just using this as a potential guideline for the Bitcoin price. And of course, we still have this possible bump and run reversal pattern here on the daily timeframe for Bitcoin. But really for this pattern to continue to play out, we really need to see a bit more of a bounce here from this line, which is coming in at around 45K approximately. But preferably, we need to see Bitcoin break above this high just here, coming in at around 52,000 approximately. And if Bitcoin can do that, if we can put in a new higher high on the chart, then obviously that would be really bullish for Bitcoin. But right now we are currently not seeing that. But what we are seeing is higher lows in the daily RSI for Bitcoin, which is still really good to see because this is actually something that we normally see as the Bitcoin price is approaching at least a short term bottom. And finally, giving you another quick update on the US dollar currency index here on the daily time frame. I mentioned this in my last update video on the channel. So if you missed that video, definitely check it out because this is just going to be a quick follow up from that video. But what we can see here is over the past one day, we have seen a little bit more of a bounce here in the US dollar currency index. But at least at the time within this video, we are currently testing this line of previous resistance and then it flipped into support. And now it is potentially acting as resistance again, if we can see a rejection here. And by the way, right now, this line is coming in at approximately 96.4 on the US dollar currency index. And if we do see a rejection from that level and continue further to the downside, in that scenario, if the US dollar is dropping to the downside, that would be bullish for the Bitcoin price against the US dollar, because of course, Bitcoin would only need to keep up the same demand. And if the US dollar is falling against Bitcoin, then that would create the effect of Bitcoin rising against the US dollar. But if this DXY chart breaks above this point right here, and more importantly, breaks above these highs, which are coming in at around 97 approximately, then that would be more of a bearish signal for Bitcoin, at least in the shorter term. And if you want extra Bitcoin content throughout the day, and if you want to stay up to date in the crypto markets at all times, make sure you follow me over on my Twitter. And the link to my Twitter is in the description down below and also in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video or got something valuable out of it, please make sure to leave a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe with notifications turned on so that you do not miss out on any of these future updates that I post every single day. Also, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about these earlier videos, if you would prefer these videos to be earlier, or if you prefer these videos a little bit later in the day. And before you click off, you might as well check out one of these uploads if you haven't already. But that is everything that I have to say for this update. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.